Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Gay From Scratch and uh, Google Summer of Code is over. You may have saw earlier this week that Godot announced there are eight different projects that were sponsored and basically the whole idea behind this project is Google pays students to work uh, over the summer on uh, open source projects. And another open source favorite in the world of game development is Blender. And Blender actually had seven projects this year for Google Summer of Code and all of their... Um, I don't know what you'd call them. Students, I guess, uh, have submitted their final results. If you go over to the developer blog over on Blender, we have the end result of all of these projects. And that's what we're going to look at today very quickly, what those seven projects are, and then we'll get into when we'll actually see some fruits of this labor. So each student has submitted uh, in different formats what they finished off. The first project was a proposal to improve Outliner. Now, Outliner is the um, the you know, scene tree, I suppose you could call it, in Blender. And what they have done is, let's see, sync selection between Outliner and other editors, Outliner selection operations, uh, range, box, and keyboard walk selection of elements, uh, fixes to scrolling operators, drag and drop improvements for parenting objects. Um, the next one up was uh, Cycles EV improvements. And this one's a little bit less specific about what they worked on, but you can see basically by the code submissions, uh, some of the various different things that they've done to improve the Cycles and EV renderers. Various different deliverables here. Next up, we had, and this one's probably the one that I found most interesting and probably the least finished at this point in time, uh, but it's definitely the groundwork has been done. And this is to bring virtual reality headset through OpenXR support to Blender. So do you fancy the idea of working in Blender? Well, that's what, sorry, blame Blender using VR. That's exactly what this project was all about. Core features added are well-performing VR rendering, support to dynamically connect to open XR runtimes, uh, VR session management as per open XR specifications, add to hide VR features by default from the UI, basic open XR event management, carefully designed error handling strategy, canceling the VR session with a useful uh, user error message and no side effects to the rest of Blender, Compatibility with DirectX only runtimes, debugging utilities, um, internal abstractions and APIs to support maintenance and future work. Uh, features were added while performing VR. They go into a lot more detail about what all those various different things are. So in this particular branch, you'd actually be able to toggle into VR and interact with your scene using your headset if it's compatible with OpenXR. And as far as I know, pretty much all of them are compatible with OpenXR. Uh, and then we got some of the stuff that is unfinished or needs to do. Drawing on non-OpenGL windows. Blitting OpenGL frame buffer content into another frame buffer in a different OpenGL context, resizing of the default frame buffer, and bundling uh, relevant OpenXR SDK sources with the Blender source code under the extern folder, an unfinished move all VR drawing to another thread, and make viewport theme usage thread safe, and then preparations for future work stuff. But basically, this is the first pass on bringing Blender to virtual reality, which is kind of cool. Um, next up, we have custom bevel profiles final report. Uh, there's quite a bit to this. We'll actually come back to it in time, but basically it's improvements to the bevel tools and UI. Um, a better bevel is always a welcome thing. Uh, next up, we have Embry on GPU. Embry is uh, Intel's real-time rendering kernels, uh, so it's better support there. Uh, work done, the creation of a BVH structure are extracted from Embry internal structure and support the existing following traversal features. Instance mesh motion blur curves without motion blur. Embry also supports these new features that have been added to the traversal code. Nodes that are only uh, valid for a range of time, linear interpolation of bounding box at traversal time. And the remaining work consists of support for motion blur on curves, convert step is currently single threaded and can benefit from multi-threaded, improvements to creation of leaf, uh, shrink step can be optimized, uh, so if you want to grab it, the code instructions are available here. Uh, we've got cloth simulator improvements, uh, what has been done, the remeshing setup is performed every frame. It starts by creating an equivalent triangulated B mesh of the cloth. It does not already exist from the previous frame. After this, the vertex sizing is determined. This is done by first finding uh, face sizing and then, okay, way too specific. But basically this one is all about improvements to the cloth simulator. And then finally we have LAN PR. NPR, uh, it's probably LANPR, but the NPR stands for non-photorealistic. So this is for uh, all you anime fans out there for getting that cell shaded rendering style. That's what LAN PR is all about what has been achieved, stability and performance improvements for both modes in LAN PR, um, feature line chaining algorithm improvements for better animation quality, grease pencil output capability for LAN PR, uh, a new selection of rendering components, 
Uh, new interface to fully match Blender's 2.8's design, uh, better code structure to match Blender's source uh, conventions, and many smaller features for workflow integration. Now, you may be wondering, okay, that's a lot of really cool stuff. When are we going to start seeing this? Well, if you come back to the original blog from which all of these things were actually linked, uh, you will find a little bit more detail about the outliner improvements, but those are actually going to be in Blender 2.81. So all of these things that are coming to the outliner, all these improvements in uh, navigation and selection, those are going to be in the next release of Blender. Uh, ditto for improvement, improvements to Cycles EV rendering. This is the one that had a number of smaller commits across the, the spectrum for um, Cycles and EV. Uh, these are merged pending Veroni and Vertex color nodes uh, will also be in Blender 2.81. Uh, Blender 2.82 is when we should start seeing the virtual reality stuff. That's probably, again, the one that I am most excited about. Um, the bevel stuff is also going to be coming in... Um, the 8.2 release and possibly in 2.82 or later we get the uh, Embry BVH for GPU uh, so support for Embry fast BVH and GPU could speed up considerably the cycles rendering and the cloth simulator improvements so if you actually want to see some of those in action they do have a video of it available right here but those are going to be coming in um 2.82 or later, but the current status is showing code still in branch only, not sent quite yet for review. But if you want to see better cloth, that is potentially 2.82 and continued development for the LAN PR. So again, that, that, uh, non-photorealistic photo real, non renderer stuff, uh, this is ongoing. So I don't actually know exactly what that means, but it is pending code review, and who knows when you will actually see the end results there. So that is it. That is the result of the Google Summer of Code. So again, we got improvements to the outliner, definitely um, you know quality of life across the board stuff, improvements for Cycles EV, um, virtual reality, that's just fun, uh, improved bevel. So very, very functional in the trenches type stuff came out of this better cloth, uh, BVH and Embry support. It's nice, nice stuff in here for sure. And I'm curious what to hear, uh, what you think of uh, Google Summer of Code in general and the improvements that it has brought for Blender. Is there something there that you are really kind of excited about or meh? Let me know all those things, comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.